Welcome to the video lecture of UPH004 Applied Physics course. This is the second lecture of this series. Here we are going to discuss about the interference and that is related to parallel and wedge shaped thin film. In this part of the lecture what we'll do is discuss a very important principle called Stokes principle or sometimes Stokes law or sometimes Stokes relationships. Here the relationship that we get becomes very important to understand the formation of interference pattern in parallel thin film or wedge shaped thin films. So what is the Stokes principle? According to this principle in the absence of any absorption a light ray that is reflected or refracted will retrace its original path if its direction is reversed so that's the principle we start with this principle and let's see what kind of relationship or conditions that we get to understand this let us look at this figure let's say there is a light that is coming from a medium and it faces the interface with another medium here and then some part of it gets refracted along this direction and then some part of it gets reflected along this direction. So here on the top of this interface there is one medium and it has a refractive index N1 and at the bottom it has another medium which has a refractive index N2 where A is the amplitude of the incident light and uh, R1 and T1 are the coefficient of reflection and coefficient of refraction respectively. What is reflection coefficient? A reflection coefficient determines how much of the incident ray would get reflected. So in this case A is the incident amplitude. So A into R1 gets reflected and A into T1, T1 being the coefficient of reflection, A into T1 amount of light gets transmitted or refracted. Now what this Stokes principle says is as the light comes from the medium on the top and then gets divided into two parts reflected and refracted part if this reflected light and the refracted light is made to reverse its path then the whole amount of light would reverse its path exactly and give back the light which was incident. There if only if there is no absorption in the medium. While it is traveling through the medium, there is no absorption at the interface in the medium. Then only the complete reversal of the light is possible. So to understand this, the consequence of this principle, let us look at these two situations in a bit detail. So let us draw this part of the figure. There is an interface. On the top, there is one medium with refractive index N1 and there is another medium with refractive index N2. Let's say this is the top it's air and on the bottom it's glass something like this and there is an incident wave and this incident wave has an amplitude A and one part of it gets reflected and one part of it gets refracted. Now A being the incident amplitude the amount of light that gets reflected is A into R1. An amount of light that gets refracted is A into T1. So in the next case what it says is so in the next case what it say is that if the part that got reflected so this part which had an amplitude A into R1 if this part gets reversed then again some part of it would be reflected and some part of it would be refracted. Now how much would that be refracted? This is A into R1 the amount that was incident then the refracted amount would be A into R1 into T1 then amount that is getting reflected would be A R1 into R1. Similarly, let's look at another scenario. Let's look at another scenario where the refracted part gets its part reversed. So what would happen? Some part of it would get 
reflected how much it would reflect it would reflect a t1 and a t1 r2 and some part of it would get transmitted or refracted how much would that be that would be a t1 into t so again just to be careful what is a a is original incident amplitude r1 coefficient of reflection when going from medium n1 to n1 t1 is the coefficient of transmission or refraction while going from n1 to n2 the other medium similarly r2 is coefficient of reflection when going from n2 to n2 and t2 is coefficient of transmission or reflection refraction while going from n2 to n1 so this is our scenario a this is scenario b and this is scenario c now to have a complete reversal then we have to combine the scenario b and c what do you get when you combine scenario b and c you get this figure this part b figure right so for the complete reversal so for complete reversal of the light we should have a scenario here now in the original case we had a was the incident light so for the complete reversal if this a r1 and a t1 is to reverse its path and then again we should get the amplitude that would travel in this direction in the original incident direction b a so that means here this amplitude a r1 square and a t1 t2 must be is equal to a that's what we get here for the complete reversal you should get a r1 square plus a t1 t2 must be is equal to a whatever was incident after reversal must be equal to whatever was traveling in the opposite direction in the reverse direction then we should get another condition where in the original case here so there was no light that was traveling in this direction so that means whatever he is traveling here must be is equal to zero for a complete reversal originally there was no light traveling here so after reversal also there should not be any light so the condition that we should get is a t1 r2 plus a r1 t1 is equal to zero now from this relationship we would get t1 t2 is equal to 1 minus r1 square also we should know that r1 square plus t1 square must be equal to 1 or r2 square plus t2 square must be equal to 1 this is something like conservation without loss whatever gets transmitted and whatever get reflected their amplitude square must be equal to 1 these are like probabilities how much got reflected and how much got transmitted the probability must be equal to one and then the other case too in this first case the rays are coming from the medium n1 to medium n2 in the second case the rays are coming from the medium n2 to the medium n1 so if we use this relationship here then 1 minus r1 square is equal to t1 square and that implies that t1 must be is equal to t2 so that's one relationship and then another relationship that we can get from here is so t1 this t1 gets cancelled out and a also gets cancelled out so you get r2 is equal to minus r1 so these are the two relationship that you get if you follow the stokes principle so these two relationships are called stokes relations now what are these the important one is the second relationship that you get r1 is equal to minus r2 or the other way around you say r2 is equal to minus r1 both are same so what is the meaning of this statement the meaning is that whatever phase that is associated with the reflected beam r1 in the medium n1 light coming from the medium n1 and it is getting reflected back into the medium n1 itself so in that case the phase that is associated with the reflected ray by r2 that is in the 
medium N2. That means the light that is coming from the medium N2 falling into the interface and reflected, getting reflected back into the medium N2 again. So this phase that is associated with the reflected ray R2 would be 180 degree or pi out of phase. What would this mean? This means this. So let's look at this statement and try to understand what just happened. Let's look at this statement and just try to understand what this statement is saying. So there is a light that is getting reflected from an interface that was between medium N1 and medium N2. So the phase between and there is another situation where the light and there is another situation where light is coming from the medium N1 where the light is coming from the medium where the light is coming from the medium N2 to N1 where the light is coming from the medium N2 and then also getting back reflected back into the medium N2. So this R1 is equal to minus R2 what this is says is is that the phase that this incident ray 1 and reflected ray 2 what it says is that this incident ray 1 would have a phase pi would have a phase difference what it says is that this ray 1 would have a phase difference what this says is that this ray 2 would have a phase difference of pi with the ray 1 whereas so this is this r1 case and this is the r2 case so in this case phase difference is pi in this case this is my ray 1 this is ray 2 the phase difference between them would be 0 so for again so for example again for example let's say this is air this is glass what this Stokes relation is saying that if a light coming from the air gets reflected from the glass surface then there will be a phase difference between the two rays and that phase difference would be is equal to pi whereas if light comes from the glass and falls onto this interface with the air and gets reflected in that case there would not be any phase difference between the incident and the reflected ray so light coming from a rarer medium gets reflected from a denser medium phase difference of pi gets introduced between the incident and the reflected ray and the light coming from a denser medium gets reflected back from a rarer medium there is no phase difference between the incident and the reflected ray so this is the meaning of this statement that if in one case phase difference is zero then in another case there will be phase difference of pi also analogously you can understand this situation from here it's like if you have the incident wave coming from a rarer medium and falling on the interface with a denser medium then the reflected ray would have a phase difference of pi so here it was the phase was here then the reflected ray the phase becomes here 180 degree out of phase now analogously you can think the situation that is similar to a wave that forms on a string and the one end of the string is attached now to understand this let us look at this simulation where we have a string what I'll do is I'll give a pulse here and this pulse would travel along this direction and gets and the other end of the string is attached to this clamp and then let's see what happens I'm giving a pulse on one end let's see how it gets reflected from the other end so the pulse goes and then it comes back so look at how the pulse gets reflected from the clamped end as the wave comes in and faces this clamped part then it immediately gets a phase shift of pi at this clamped end and that's this is similar to what happens when a light coming from a rarer medium light is a wave so a light coming from a rarer medium gets reflected 
from a denser medium surface. It undergoes a phase shift of pi between the incident and the reflected ray. Now in the second case let's make it a loose end. See what happens if we remove the clamp and make this end free to move. So let's give it another go. So the wave comes in and the wave maintains its phase. There is no phase difference on this end. Of course the other end is fixed so that's why the there is a reversal of phase in the on the other hand where here there is no phase. The reflected ray follows the same phase and it gets reflected from the loose end but on the fixed end the phase becomes opposite 180 degree. So that's what is analogously similar in case of the light when it gets reflected from an interface. So let us come back to our previous situation. So these are the two cases which are described here in these two slides. Let us now talk about the take home message for this short lecture. The first take home message is the Stokes principle. So according to this principle, in the absence of any absorption, a light ray that is reflected or refracted will retrace its original path if its direction is reversed. The next take home message is that the most interesting result here is that R1 is equal to minus of R2, where R1 is the reflection coefficient in one medium and R2 is the reflection coefficient in the another medium. And this minus sign signifies that there is a phase difference of 180 degree with respect to one medium to the other. So that means whatever phase is associated with the reflection on one side of the interface it is 180 degrees different on the other side of the interface. For example if R1 has a phase of 0 R2 has a phase of 180 degrees or pi. So in a pictorial sense this is one medium on the top which is air let's say and this is another medium which is glass at the bottom let's say. Then if a phase of pi is introduced between the two rays 1 and 2 after the reflection in the medium air then in the medium class zero phase difference is introduced that means no phase difference is there between the ray 1 and ray 2 due to the reflection in that medium. So these are the take home message that you should remember after this lecture. So this ends our discussion with the Stokes relations or Stokes principle related to the optics.